Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Fairy Talk. My name is Nick. That's my quintessential introduction, and um, well, I guess just get used to it, because <laughs> I have nothing else. If you guys have any any other better way, and I mean a good way, to introduce moi, then you guys go right ahead and and you just uh, leave that in the comments below. <laughs> Anyways, because last time I said. Um, if, if you guys don't, uh, um, back in the day when I was on YouTube, I didn't actually sign up for a YouTube account and I just typed in names of people that I wanted to see. That kind of came out wrong and then I realized, and then the first comment of the video, it was, it was just classic. Um, it was, <laughs> if you don't have a YouTube account, then you wouldn't be able to comment to say that you don't have a YouTube account and I thought that was absolutely hilarious but <laughs> but anyways uh i'm gonna throw in like a little tidbit like let's see if you guys watch this whole thing do you guys know what a perioctoy is perioctoy it's related to theater and the reason i wanted to talk about theater was i had a couple emails asking people or people asking me like you know theater is my full-time job no theater is not my full-time job i wish it was i, I live in wisconsin and there's not a whole lot of theater jobs for full-time. I mean, there are, but, I mean, if you live in New York and uh, you work for Broadway or, uh, or if you're in Vegas, uh, there's a lot of live theatrical type things to where there's employment available. Um, but, anyways, if you guys are of a building nature, whether it's a woodworker or a maker or, you know, the modern nomenclature... Um, Check into your local theater scene, whether it be high school or community theater, nonprofit. You know, there are props and set makers, set builders, set designers, whatever you want to call it. And you get to work in a multitude of medias. And um, that's one thing that I think drew me to theater. I've acted a couple times. I'm you know, not any good at it, per se. But, um, but yeah, if, if you guys are wanting to... Uh, branch out, just like I said, check your local, even middle schools, but high schools, and uh, you, you can get into prop making and set building and things of that nature to where you don't necessarily have to have a budget because, I mean, they have the budget, albeit a lot of times small. Uh, you get to work in, you know, you know, a lot of times they'll hand you things and they'll say, we want this on this budget, and it's kind of a fun challenge. So if you're looking at getting into building things, definitely check your, your local theater. Um, the next one, the most amount of comments I think I've gotten in a long, long time, the hand plane restoration. It seemed like you guys really liked this one, and, and like I said, and I'm glad because I really like this one. Uh, I got a lot of comments on the polishing, on the sharpening, on the, on the handles, and uh, the knob, and different things, and I'll try and run through them real quick, but the, uh, the handle, or as Ted Alexander pointed out to me, is called the tote. And I, and I didn't realize that. I've never heard that terminology before. But uh, And the knob, uh, the wood was given to me by Matthew Cremona. And I'll leave everybody's links and everything for whatever reason, in case you guys don't know. Uh, anyone that I mention, I'll leave all the links in the description. But the cherry, and that's what it was, was off his secretary. He's been working on a secretary uh, for a long time. I think it's over a couple years now. And he had some cutoffs from the uh, the crown molding that he was making, the top molding, to the upper case. And he had sent me some because this knob was just over eight quarters finished. And all I had um, was eight quarter cherry. And I'm like, man, eh, do I glue it? Do it? Because I wanted the grain to look real nice. And he sent me this cherry. And so, I don't know, maybe maybe this hand plane will get to to visit the Cremona secretary someday and they can... They can reminisce. <laughs> and then also the uh, the polishing. No, that is not required on a hand, hand plane restoration. Uh, the bottom, and it is pretty sawdusty. Um, and it doesn't really show up that well on camera, but uh, that is just flattened. I forget exactly what grit I flattened it to. I would say 1,500, 2,000, maybe, maybe even 4,000. Um, but the polishing... I got so many emails asking about uh, metal polishing that I will do a video strictly on metal polishing. I just wanted something that, I don't know, maybe, maybe I was bored. Maybe I wanted to take it, I mean, maybe that's my nature. I just wanted to take it a little bit further 
And so, um, so I, so I polished the bejesus out of it <laughs> is uh, long story short. And then the lacquer, I mean, 10 coats. Yeah. Well, hopefully it gets some use over the years and, and it holds up. Also, uh, some questions on the gravity feed sandblaster I used for the actual, the base of it, uh, it was a Harbor Freight Gravity Feed uh, Sandblaster. It was, um, I think it was like 20 bucks without any type of coupon. Did I like it? No. No, I didn't. Um, there was a metering valve to allow the media in, in which, in this case, uh, when I did the hand plane, I used um, uh, bead glass or broken glass. I mean, we're talking minute, like sand. And I, I didn't like it. I've used some nice blast cabinets over the years. And uh, I, I just, I didn't like it. It, uh, you know, I mean, I guess you get what you pay for in that instance. Did it do the job? Sure. Uh, $20 sandblaster and maybe $10 or $15 worth of media, it did the job. But um, if I ever end up reorganizing, cleaning my shop, and I find room to put a, either a bench top or standalone blast cabinet, that's definitely one thing that's on my list. And uh, so anyways, uh, you know, try that Harbor Freight gravity feed sandblaster at your own risk i'm i'm sure you know i don't know i just didn't get that good of results from it but uh also i wanted to mention for those of you that aren't aware maybe you didn't catch it follow it whatever uh recently my one year anniversary of making youtube videos so i had a um kind of a party and there's a big huge tool giveaway over on my website nickferry.com I got Fast Cap involved. They're giving away three prize packages. Uh, Craig, uh, they're giving away two different prize packages. Well, two of the same product, but either way, two. It's really nice. Um, and Bessie Tools, they're giving away two of their K-Body uh, Revo clamps. Matt Cremona's giving a slab of cherry away. Tim Babb is giving away a pen and Ted Alexander a copper rose intern vase. So please, check out nickferry.com. And uh, you can go over there and enter. And I'm sorry, I don't write international sweepstakes laws. It is, is U.S. residents only, with the exception of the Bessie giveaway, the, the two parallel clamps. Uh, you can be in the United States or Canada. I appreciate all you guys all internationally. However, I can't do much about that. But it, please check it out. It was, it was, you know, all these companies stepping up. A lot of great tools. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, oh, another thing. I'm trying not to wiggle it around too much. Uh, deft. Uh, lacquer. I have been using this stuff for many, many years. And about a year ago, it seemed, they um, like just kind of left the store shelves. And uh, Deft has this really nice spray tip. Not only the, the spray tip here, you can adjust the pattern, and whether it's horizontal or vertical, the, the finger control and everything. I mean, it's just really nice. But uh, I, I always like satin. I uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe it's because I, I do so much theater stuff and everything is kind of a satin or a flat in sheen. But the Deft uh, Clear Coat uh, Spray Lacquer, it's... I don't know. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments section. What happened to Deft? Why can't I find it? Why is it so rare? Did Deft sell out? Did they go out of business? Did they reformulate? And I, I have no idea. Um, but anyways, Rich McNatt, I'll leave his link as well. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. Sent me a case of this stuff. And he lives in, like, New Mexico. And he went to his Lowe's and they had it. And he, and he right away messaged me. He said, hey, you know, you want me to send you something? And I'm like, yeah. Please, in the comment section, let me know. I want, I want to know, I want to know what the debacle, the, the big, huge debate is. What, what happened to Deft, and, and, and how can we get them back? So, anyways, that's what I got for that. Well, I think that's all that I have for you guys for this week. I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching. Uh, until I see you guys next time, take care.